Hey guys, and welcome back to Voicey here. Today's entitled parents think that they can just barge into a room and see you naked. Do entitled parents have no shame? Also, we're gonna try and put together a special episode once a week with just your fan submitted stories. And to make it more accessible to you guys, you can now submit it to this email address, voiceyhearstories at gmail.com. Okay, and on with the show. Don't forget Voicey veterans to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. This story is called, EM shuns me for giving directions to her daughter, ends up getting thrown out. The backstory. I've recently, as in eight months ago, been diagnosed with agoraphobia. So basically, I constantly try to avoid anything that could lead to panic or embarrassment. So whenever I go out, I try to stay close to someone I trust. Or if I can't, I try to stay close to any and all exit doors or windows. This is from my personal experience, and this does not apply to everyone with the condition. Please understand that. And I think it's extremely important to note that I am an SM, selective mute, in some situations, but in others, I can just barely speak. The characters. Karen equals entitled mumster. NK, nice kid. Me is me. AM is amazing friend. One day, a few months ago, I was at a store with my best friend, and probably the only man I trust. Us both being artists, we were looking for an array of paints and supplies, and he told me that he needed to go to the restroom, and to stay there because it was not only close to an exit, but it was also close to the bathroom. I said okay, and he left to do his business. But while I was scanning the shelves for a certain product, I heard the doorbell chime, and in comes our favourite person, Karen, who was followed by a younger girl with natural bright red hair and blue eyes. Karen said something quickly to her kid, and then they both parted ways. NK began to walk in the direction of my aisle, and I started to panic a little. When she finally reached it, she walked next to me and started to look for something. After about 40 seconds of looking, she turned to me and politely asked if I knew where a certain paint was. Me, being a regular of the store, knew exactly where it was, but in that situation, I could barely speak let alone look at her. She realized my state and said, oh, take your time, and gave me a little smile. After about 40 seconds of stuttering and slurring, I finally managed to tell her that it was in the next aisle over. She thanked me and went along with her business. At that time, my friend had just gotten back from the bathroom and saw me talking to NK and asked me about it and asked if I was all right. After explaining everything, he calmed down, and so had I. We went on with our shopping and we had ended up walking next to Karen, and she apparently saw this as the perfect time to ask me about talking to her daughter. And the conversation went like this. Excuse me? Yes ma'am? Karen in a somewhat rude tone. Not you! She points to me. Her! Me visibly confused. Oh, yes ma'am? Mind telling me why you were speaking to my daughter? Me already scared for my life. Oh, I was telling her where something was. Heck no! She cuts me off by raising her hand in front of my face. You were not telling her anything! You were flirting with her! Now at this point I realized what she was saying. While I was talking to her daughter, my face had gone red and it seemed like I was doing more than just giving direction. Oh no, ma'am, I swear, it was harmless. I don't want some f talking to my daughter! Now she had raised her voice quite a bit. I would have started crying right then and there if my friend hadn't grabbed my arm and took over for me. Okay, she wasn't flirting with your darn daughter. She was helping her. And don't raise your voice. We're talking like normal people, not arguing. Yes, she was. If she wasn't, then why was her face so red? And why did it take her so long, huh? She goes red when she's nervous. And she's got a stutter. I don't believe that bullcrap for one second. She was... And here comes her daughter, obviously confused. Hey mom, what's happening? I was telling this to stop flirting with you. That's what. Karen crossed her arms and NK sighed. Mom, she was helping me. Once again, Karen butts in. No, no, no. I don't believe that lie for a second. I'm not gonna let this lesbian ruin my daughter. And that's final. Karen now looks at me and steps closer. And as for you... She pokes my chest, and I nearly faint. Stay the frick away from my- All of a sudden, my friend pulls me back completely and goes off at Karen. Do not touch her, first off. And secondly, she doesn't want your darn daughter. After that, they both start yelling, and I begin to have a panic attack in the corner. After some time, security is called, and they ask what's going on. Karen says, 
This man tried to arm me. Like all Karens do. And after about a minute of trying to tell the officer about the R threats, my friend supposedly made, she then turns to me and says, And that thing touched my daughter. Arrest her. The daughter cuts in, but I can't hear a word. After that, I remember Karen giving me threats while she's being forced out in handcuffs. And the daughter apologizes. My friend tries to calm me to barely succeed. And the officer asked if we wanted to press charges. I tell her no, but my friend insists on it. We end up suing her for trauma or whatever. Imagine being diagnosed with agoraphobia and then something like this happens to you. Surely that would only add to your anxiety of being in situations out in public. It would just justify it in your mind. You're like, yeah, this is why I don't go out and talk to people. Because, you know, they're people. This story is called Entitled Kid at a Laser Tag Arena. Okay, so with how the virus has most of us staying at home, I was doing some spring cleaning and found an old laser tag scorecard, which reminded me of the entitled brat and his equally entitled mom. For good, all names changed to our name we had on the scorecard. Maverick, yours truly. Deadeye, a close friend of mine. Paladin, the birthday kid. Ace, Cyborg and Samurai, my bros. Not literally, you know what I mean. The Bad. They swapped gear around so no consistent names. Bully 1, 2 and 3, B123. Bully friend of the EK. Mostly just eggs him on and joins in his taunting. EK, the entitled kid. Take your average mic spamming kid you'd find on any FPS and raise the annoyance to nails on chalkboard levels. Then you have him. EM, the entitled mother of the annoying brat. Background. Back when I did Taekwondo, my mum met Paladin's mum and they got to doing what mums do best. Talk about how their kids are doing in school, what their kids' hobbies are, the usual. Later down the lines, Paladin's mum brought up how Paladin was struggling with math, algebra, and how she was trying to find a tutor. My mum offered to have me tutor him, since at that time I was in honours in math, though my handwriting was less than readable even by me reading my notes, not even 10 minutes after writing them. So for the next few months, I'd tutor Paladin, helping him take a C and turn it into a solid A. 90 if I remember correctly. After he passed that year with all A's, math was the only subject he really struggled with, Paladin's folks decided to reward his straight A's by taking him to a laser tag arena for his birthday. The guest contained a variety of friends he made at school and doing Taekwondo. I was invited as thanks for tutoring him. Fast forward to the day of the party, we're all slowly trickling in. The place has decent selection of arcade games. One of those giant tube mazes like you'd see at a McDonald's, just a bit smaller. A few party rooms and some regular tables in a dining area. Entering the party room, I drop off my present and sit down to see some of the current game of laser tag going on, getting a good look at the area. It's almost symmetrical. Bases are on opposite sides. There's a bit of high ground, which is just the outline of a rectangle over the main area, with stairs near the bases. So as we wait for our drinks and friends to arrive, Paladin, Deadeye and I go off to play a few games. After about 15 to 20 minutes of it, our party is being called to the arena. Our party versus the EK's party. And we're all suiting up. EK and Bullies 1 to 3 begin their smack talk. Mostly the usual, You idiots ready to lose? And other childish banter. I look over to Deadeye and say something to the extent of, I'ma beat them. Only to get an eye roll and a grow up maverick. That's when the EK notices our team has a few girls. Oh they got girls on their team? This'll be easier than I thought. They probably don't even know how to aim. Says the EK with his bullies 1 to 3, laughing with him. Deadeye looks back to me and says, So you keep him busy, I shoot. I tell her, No, no, we should be mature and take the high ground. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I then tell her about the second floor and the vantage points it provides. Round 1. Game starts and we take the high ground. Cyborg Ace and Samurai head there too. From the second floor of the arena, we got a good vantage point to hit just about anyone below us. Ace tells Cyborg to watch his back as he goes to shoot up the enemy base, leaving the four of us up top side to shoot down the enemy. Dead eye and spot the EK. Wasn't too hard to do since he won't shut up with his trash talk. We both shoot. She got him. I get B2 and B3. She gets B1. We then decided to pitch a tent, roast some marshmallows, gather around the bonfire and begin spawn camping. 
When you get tagged, your suit glows white as opposed to red or blue, and your gun tells you who you shot and where on the person you were shot. From there you have a 5 to 10 second respawn timer. Now I don't condone spawn camping, but given how EK acts, it sure felt good. Towards the end of this match we were counting down those seconds and racing to see which one of us can shoot him, as well as anyone else we saw from our nice campsite. The game ends. We won. EK is salty about his loss. The end, right? Well if it was this would be an entitled people and not entitled parents now wouldn't it? So we return to our party room and overhear the EK whining to his party about how Maverick and Deadeye kept killing me, and how he didn't even get to play that much. We chuckle to ourselves and enjoy our victory pizza, and hear EM console him and say something to the extent of, point out if we're against them again, and I'll join in to take care of them. Scorecards come in, number one Deadeye, number two Maverick, number three Ace. Deadeye and I were about two or three tags apart. She lightly teases me about being a bit too slow. We laugh, party jokes about it with one of my favourites being, next time you should make some more s'mores. Next game is against some random team. We don't go all out on them, but we still manage a win. Cake and presents next. Good chocolate chip cookies cake. Paladin's mum makes a darn good cake. After cake and presents, we have quite a bit of time before our final game starts, so back to the arcade. So 30 to 45 minutes and a few high scores later, it's time for the final match of our party, against EK's party once more. As we're getting ready and EK realises it's us, he tells his mum, this is the same party that kept spawn camping me. To which the whale starts to raise a bit of heck about it. After some back and forth with staff, she was eventually allowed to join her son's team, even though they already had one more person than us. As we're about to enter, I look over to Deadeye with a smirk on my face and loudly say, same plan as before Deadeye? Of course Maverick, only this time we go for the base. We used our nicknames intentionally and spoke loud enough for the EK and EM to hear us. That look of anger in their eyes was all the confirmation we needed to know they'd focus on us. Round 2. Game starts. Deadeye and I storm their base. Paladin and the bros take the high ground. They overheard us. Instead of shooting at their base, we move to another nice little vantage point near their base and wait a bit. Sure enough, EK bullies 1 to 3 and EM shows up, but don't see us just yet. Nailed them in an ambush, then we leg it. EK's shouting something like, There they are, get them! They chase us, but lose us and fall right into Paladin's trap. Ace and Cyborg go down to shoot up their base as Deadeye takes to the high ground. I circle around and take pot shots at them to just further throw fuel on the fire. They continue to chase me with one or two tags on me, but their antics get some more of EK's team to join the chase, only for Deadeye to nab a few more tags. I eventually slip away and swap out with Deadeye, who keeps them busy. Ace and Cyborg retreat back to the high ground as the enemy had begun to catch on. The EKs had been tagged at least 20 times at this point. I slip away from the high ground and go for their base. As I'm making my way there, I see Jubba the Hut, I mean the EM, who has run out of breath and is a sitting duck. Hey, free target practice. Samurai is on the stairs near their base and found a good angle to shoot their base from. I join up with Samurai at that vantage point and begin shooting at their base as well. Finally game's over. We won! Most of the enemies were roped into hunting down me and Deadeye. The EK was complaining about how it wasn't fair and whining. His mother was raising a big stink about how we were playing dirty and must have cheated, but both were shut down by the referee in charge of the match when he said, You had two more people than them, and even with the numbers advantage, still lost because you had almost everyone going after two people. Of course you'd lose, nobody was even going for the blue team's base. They were all going off to help you go after two people. They left muttering something about how it was still unfair and we still managed to spawn camp them and how EK's team should have won. Afterwards we got our scorecards back. Number 1 Maverick, number 2 Deadeye, number 3 Paladin. Deadeye and I were only one tag apart. Taking that pot shot at EM won me first place on our team. From there we all played a few games before our folks showed up and picked us up one by one, with me and Deadeye getting a few angry glares from the entitled party as we played some House of the Dead while referring to each other by our nicknames. Laser tag can be heaps of fun but I don't know why it is that every time you go there's always some kind of bratty kid. 
It's just the sort of game that seems to draw in entitled families. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the chance of winning and defeating other people, and somehow that makes them feel entitled like they're the one who's always supposed to win. They're probably the type of kid that when they play a board game with a neighbor, their parent always makes them win by cheating somehow. Well, that doesn't always work in the real world. This story is called Entitled Aunt Tries to Barge Into My Room While I Was Changing My Clothes and Got Her Head Banged Against the Door. My crazy entitled aunt, whom you all know so well by now, has an annoying habit, one of her many annoying habits, to just storm in when I was changing my clothes. The door would be closed and if it wasn't locked, she would just let herself in. My protest that I may be in a state of undress fell on deaf ears, as did any instance that she knocked before entrance, like a civilized human being. The following incidents happened when I was either 18 or 19. Aunt and her husband were over for a visit. I was in my room, changing my clothes. My bedroom door had a small defect. It wouldn't lock properly. So anytime it was closed, my dad, stepmom and stepbrother would either knock or ask if they could come in. Not entitled aunt, of course. She considered herself above such frivolous courtesies. She could come into rooms as she saw fit and us mere mortals would just have to live with it. Unfortunately for her, this mere mortal had had enough of her privacy being invaded. My top was off when I heard the door begin to creep open. I yelled, I'm changing, wait outside. As expected, aunt didn't listen and was about to stick her head in when I swiftly reached the door, pulled it back a little and slammed it hard into aunt's thick skull. Not enough to crack her skull, but enough to hurt. Aunt let out a howl that instantly brought a smile to my face. She went downstairs whining. I followed. She yelled at my dad about what I had done. My dad and uncle, aunt's husband, were drinking at the time and were uncharacteristically chilled. Dad just looked at her and then looked at me and said something like, Yeah, don't do that. My uncle just bursts out laughing as if his wife getting her head banged was the funniest thing he had ever heard. Such dismissal of her grievances was too much to bear for my aunt. She demanded that they leave immediately. Uncle told her he was in no condition to drive. Besides, he and my dad were going to watch a cricket match, so leaving was out of the question. Aunt dialed my cousin's number, believing wholeheartedly that her son would come to her aid. But judging from her end of the conversation, cousin was out with friends and wasn't going to drive all the way over to deal with her stupid butt, and why couldn't she just stop getting into unnecessary squabbles? Aunt had no options left. She just sat down on the couch while holding against her head the ice pack my stepmom had brought for her. Her anger was boiling over, but was completely ignored by my happy dad and uncle. It was a lovely evening. I don't understand how some people have no respect for other people's privacy. I'm 100% sure that that aunt wouldn't let anybody barge into her room if she was changing. So why on earth would she think she's entitled to do the same? It's only like my second day back, but I'm already having a great time here with you guys. Don't forget, you can now submit your stories by email to voiceyhearstories at gmail.com. Post your stories, memes, and fan art at r slash voicey here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright voicey veterans, I'll see you in the next one.